Hello everyone, welcome to this data engineering episode. In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate multiple sales packet files from Google Cloud Storage to Azure SQL database using Azure Data Factory. So let's get started. I'm going to come to this Excel file and I'll show you the content of the sample data. So this is sales 2022 and I can see I've got five columns here product unit price and sales i want to come to this folder i've got 2020 to 2023 now these are the excel files which has been converted to parquet file i'm going to come to the google cloud storage and i can say the sales 2020 to 2023 and the name of the bucket is sales parquet so we want to go ahead and integrate all these four excel files which is not been converted to a parquet file into azure sql database using the azure data factory I'm going to come to the portal.azure.com and the first thing I'm going to do is to launch the Azure SQL database. Now, I'm going to prefer to use the SQL Server Madmin Studio to connect to the Azure SQL database. I'm going to open the SSMS and this is the on-premise. I'm going to click on this to connect to a database engine and then I'm going to provide the name of the server. I'm going to come to the portal.azure.com and I'm going to launch the SQL database. So, click on this. In the overview, I'm going to copy the server name. So I'm going to copy this and return back to the SQL Server Management Studio. Control V to paste. And then for the authentication, I'm going to use the Microsoft Entra multi-factor authentication. So click on this. I'm going to provide the username. So to get the username, I'm going to come back to the portal. Click on this server name. I'm just going to launch the Cornerstone IT Solution database with the SQL Server. So I'm going to copy this Cornerstone IT Solutions username, which is the username I need. Come back to the SSMS and I can contribute to paste and then click on connect. I am successfully connected to the Azure SQL database. I can say Cornerstone IT Solutions database.windows.net. I'm going to click on this plus to expand the databases and I've got the Cornerstone IT Solutions database. So click on this to expand. And I'm going to click on the table plus sign to expand. I can see the existing table within the database. Now I'm going to come to this script and now I'm going to create this table named sales data from GCS. I'm going to have the transaction year product unit price sales columns with the appropriate data types. So I'm going to copy this create table script, come back to the SSMS and then click on this new query. And then I want to make sure that I am within the Cornerstone IT Solutions database. So I'm going to click on this to switch to the Cornerstone IT Solutions. So click on that. And then I'm going to come here and paste the create table script. Control V to paste. So we have the create table name sales data from GCS with all these columns and the appropriate data types. So I'm going to go ahead and create this or execute. So this command executed successfully. So this has been registered in the Cornerstone to IT Solution database of the Azure SQL database. So we want to come back to the portal.azure.com and use the Azure Data Factory to perform the data integration. So I'm going to click on this, and this is my Cornerstone IT Solutions ADF1. So I'm going to click on Launch Azure Data Factory Studio. Data Factory has been launched, and I can see Cornerstone IT Solutions. I'm going to click on this to expand. I've got the home, the author, monitor, manage, and the learning center. Just like my user practice, I love to create my link service to the source and the destination, and then the data set, and then we're going to create the data pipeline. So to create the link service, I'm going to click on the manage, and under the connections, I can say link services. So I'm going to click on this new. Now, my first link service is going to be to the GCS, the Google Cloud Storage. So I'm going to set for Google Cloud Storage, and then click on continue. I'm going to give this a meaningful name and call it Google Cloud Storage Link Service. And then I'm going to provide the access key ID and the secret access key. Now I'm going to come back to the console.cloud.google.com and then I'm going to click on the settings. And the settings, I want to go to the interoperability tab and then I'm going to scroll down. So I basically need the access key, which is at the bottom here, and then the secrets. I'm going to copy this access key. Control C, come back to the ADF and Control V. And I want to copy the secret and Control V to paste. So this service URL is automatically populated, which is the https storage.google apis.com. So the same thing we have here. So it is known as storage URL here, but in the ADF, it is known as service URL. It's still the same thing. So click on test connection to the source. 
So successful created. So we have the connection to the Google Cloud Storage. So we'll create another linked service to the destination, which is the Azure SQL database. Again, click on the new, and then I will set for Azure SQL database, and then click on continue. I'm going to call this one Azure SQL database linked service. And then I'm going to provide my subscription. So which is the Visual Studio Enterprise. And I'm going to choose the name of the server. So click on this, and this is going to be Cornerstone IT Solutions. And then for the database name, I want to connect to the Cornerstone IT Solutions database. And then I'm going to provide the authentication type, which is going to be SQL authentication. So this is fine. And I'm going to provide the username. So to get a username, I'm going to come back here, copy the username. So let's go back to the ADF. Control, let me just clear this. Control V. And we need the password. So I'm going to clear this and type in the password i'm going to scroll down and then click on test connection so it's going to give us a successful connection brilliant click on create okay so we have the linked services to the source the gcs and the destination the azure sql database now we'll go ahead and create data set to the source and the data set for the destination so i'm going to come to the auto tab in the auto i want to click on this ellipsis for the data set now i can choose to create data set within the pipeline but i'm going to actually create it separately so i can just pick later on so click on this ellipsis for the data set click on the new now you can try to organize your data set by creating a folder to hold the data set but let me just create a new data set and i want to set for the google cloud storage and then click on that continue so now our data set is going to be the parquet file now don't forget our source data on the the bucket is parquet file so let me show you again so we have the 2020 to 2023 parquet file so i'm going to choose the parquet as the format so click on continue and then i'm going to call this one source sales parquet and i'm going to choose the linked service we created the google cloud storage linked service now i want to browse through the bucket which is the file path so click on this browse and then i'm going to choose the name of the bucket which is coming from the gcs okay so i'm going to pick the sales parquet now we're going to say the 2020 to 2023 parquet files Okay, so in this case, I'm not going to pick each of them because we want to read all of these four files at the same time. So just make sure you don't click anything. Click OK. So we're going to access the bucket without necessarily picking any of the 2020 to 2023 data. So we're going to stick with this import connection stop and then click on OK. This has been created. Now I'm going to click on this panel to close the properties. So we have the source sales parquet. So we're going to create the destination the sync. So again, click on this ellipsis for the data set. And I want to create a new data set for Azure SQL database. And then I'm going to call this one Azure SQL table. So let me just put a prefix. I'm going to call this one sync. And it's going to be sync Azure SQL table. And I want to pick the linked service we created, Azure SQL linked service. Now I want to go ahead and pick the table we created in the SQL Server Management Studio, the sales data from GCS. So click on this drop down, and I can see the sales data from GCS table automatically available. So I'm going to choose none. This doesn't matter anyway. Click OK. So again, we have the Sync Azure SQL Table data set. Now we can go to the pipeline under the factory resources, click on this ellipsis, and then I want to create a new pipeline. Now for the pipeline, I'm going to create the copy data activity. So search here and drag into the designer. Let me collapse this to manage the screen. I can collapse this. I can give this a meaningful name. I'm going to call this one data integration and then i can collapse this practice so we have the copy data activity within the designer so under the general i can see this default copy data one we can leave this and then move to the source now in the source i can pick the source data that we just created not too long click on this drop down so we don't need to create again click on the source sales parking which is the party file format and we're going to see this file path type and then we're going to see other things like the filter by the last and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to choose the sync. And the sync is going to be our destination, which is the sync Azure SQL table. And when I click on validate for now, I'm going to get this error. File path of data source sales packet is a folder. The wildcard name is required for copy data. So I'm going to come back here and then I'm going to choose the wildcard file path because we want to actually read all the data from that Google Cloud Storage Bucket. So I can see as soon as I click on this WordCard file, file path, I can see this has been fixed 
and which is super cool. So that has been sorted. Now, before I go ahead and debug, it's really important to check for the color mapping. So I'm going to come to the mapping tab and click on the import schemas. Okay, so we can see the import schemas. Now we can see there's actually a naming convention issue here. Now this has not been detected automatically. Now the reason is because the name of the dictionary is actually different from the name of the source. So this is actually named here in the source, but it is named as transaction here in the destination of the SQL server, the Azure SQL database. So this has been corrected and then we can see we have the default types and then these are the destination data types. We have the int variable character for the product and then we have the int, int including the sales as the int data types. Now when I come to the SSMS, I can see we have the int, vacar, int, int and so on. So this has been so let's go back to the Azure data factory. So we are done with this. Now I can click on this value to check it out for any errors. So this is good. Click close and then I can click on debug. So we're going to wait for some couple of minutes and this should give us a successful data integration from the GCS to the Azure SQL database. Amazing. This gave us a successful data integration. So we can see we have the status has succeeded. And I can click on this out view to check this out. Click on that. And I can see data rate 78,073. And then we have data rating 3,000. 816 and then we have the four files now don't forget we have four files in the source so this is the 2020 to 2023 and then we have the sync peak connection as two the rose red as 136 altogether and then we have the rose copy copy duration and so many information you can click on this to expand and we have a lot of details now let's check this out in the sql server management studio and start querying the data i'm going to come to the SSMS and then I can put in a semicolon here and I can perform a simple select star from sales data from GCS and I can run this and execute. This worked. Now let's perform the total sales by transaction year. So I'm going to come here and just type in transaction year as the column we want to select and then we want to sum the sales column as total sales and I'm going to press enter and I can get rid of these, press enter and I want to grab the group by clause. So I want to group by the transaction year and I can run this. So let's run it. There we go. So we have the 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023 total sales. So we can see based on this data set that the 2023 is the best performing year for us as a business in this context. So this is how we can read multiple packet files resident in the cloud storage into Azure SQL database, leveraging the Azure Data Factory. I trust you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share, comment, and follow me for more data engineering videos because the best is yet to come. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.